Let's bring in White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. Karine, it's good to have you back on the show. Um, so from the White House perspective, what more can be done? So uh, let me first say uh, our hearts go out to uh, the families and the victims who have been dealing with these tragic uh, gun events uh, since the last time I saw you, uh, which is really heartbreaking that we continue to have this conversation. And sadly, Mika, I don't even have answers right now. I just have questions, which is how many more kids need to die before Republicans in Congress act? How many more senseless gun violence do we need to see or have before members, members, Republican members in Congress act? We cannot throw our hands up and say nothing can be done. We need to take action. That's why you've seen the president over and over again, about a dozen times or more, put for executive action to deal with this epidemic of gun violence. And he has done more, taken more action than any other president in, its, in, their, in their first two years. And again, we need to see courage in Congress. We need Republicans to act. It is time for legislation to be put forth so that we can come up, so they can come up, and the president can sign common sense gun laws so that we can protect our kids, so that we can protect our communities, so that we can protect our churches, our grocery stores. Just think about it. Guns are the number one killer of kids. We are adults. As adults, we're supposed to be protecting our kids. And that is not happening right now. So again, I have more questions for Republicans in the House than I have answers because we have laid out what needs to happen. The president has laid out what needs to happen and they need to show courage and they need to act. Hey, Corinne, good morning. It's Jonathan. Uh, very little uh, from House Republicans on the issues of guns yesterday, but we did finally get from House Speaker McCarthy. Uh, we've got his budget in recent days and now his debt limit plan, and we wanted to get the White House reaction to what he has proposed. And can you tell us, are there any meetings scheduled right now between the president and the House Speaker as the clock ticks towards the fiscal deadline? So a couple of things I want to say, uh, Jonathan, let me just react to uh, the blueprint, the legislation that Speaker McCarthy and uh, the MAGA wing uh, of his conference, that's what we saw. They came together. He aligned himself with them and put forth a cruel proposal, a proposal that is going to devastate working American families. That's what this proposal is going to do. At the same time, it will hold America's economy hostage so that they can take a hatchet to veteran services to Meals on Wheels, to education, to cancer research, to law enforcement. That's what they put forth uh, for the American people. Now, you're asking me about a, a potential meeting. Look, we're going to continue to take a look uh, at this uh, at this legislation. We're going to analyze the impacts that it will have uh, on, again, veterans services, uh, again, education, uh, cancer research. And you know what? The president, as you've heard the president say many times, don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. Well, they showed us what they value. Uh, Speaker McCarthy and Mag mega Republicans showed us what they valued. And this is what the American people have to look at, right? And so we are going to continue to m make sure, we saw this in the president's budget, that we lower costs for Americans, that he is continuing to make sure that we fight, uh, fight to lower uh, the deficit. That's what he put forth in his uh, proposal. In his proposal, he's gonna lower the deficit by $3 billion over, uh, over 10 years. He has showed us our value and we're gonna continue to ha happy to have that conversation about the budget but when it comes to the debt uh, the debt limit they need to speaker mccarthy needs to put a piece of legislation on the floor to deal with the debt limit to make sure that we do not default something that he did three times uh, before in the last administration and yeah, certainly his voting record speaks for itself but with the fundamental impasse here and a disagreement as to what you guys are even negotiating white house versus the house republicans um what do you say to those who are really growing alarmed at the time, because we got an update this week uh, that there's an estimation that because of lighter than expected tax returns heading to the Treasury, the U.S. may be on the verge of default come June, not August as we thought, but come June, just maybe six or so weeks away. Again, 
I'm, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to be very clear. We have not mixed words on this. We have been clear for the past six plus more weeks, which is Speaker McCarthy needs to stop playing chicken with the full faith and credit of our nation. He needs to put forth immediately a piece of legislation so that we do not default. This happened. He, the Democrats joined Republicans uh, last administration three times to get this done. The president said this on Monday as well, which is the Speaker, Speaker McCarthy will be the first speaker to threaten, to threaten a default on our nation. So this is something that is their constitutional duty to do. They can do this. They could immediately put, again, a bill on the floor for a, for, to, to avoid a, a, def, a, a default. And that is on Congress to do. Again, it is their constitutional duty to get this done. Yeah, I, I want Mickey, you to look at the, what's up right now and if people are listening on the radio. Uh, it, it, what we have up is a chart that shows that the debt ceiling has been raised since 1960, 29 times under Democratic presidents, but 49 times under Republican presidents. There you go. 49 times. And so now suddenly these Republicans that broke all records for deficits and debts under Donald Trump are suddenly claiming that they really care about deficits and that it, it doesn't wash. By the way, I said this in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 about Republicans. I said, don't claim. If you're not going to fight your own Republican president, who's a big spender, breaking records every year with budget-busting uh, 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 budgets, don't do it when there's a Democrat in office. But now they're doing it, and as Karine said... They're actually risking the full faith and credit of the United States of America. And what does that mean? Well, it means three million Americans will likely lose their jobs if there's this default. And we face the economic consequences. Three million Americans. That means if you have a 401k, on average, you're going to lose about 20 thousand dollars. Kevin McCarthy and this Republican Congress who spent like drunken socialists when Donald Trump was president, they're going to cost you $20,000. Your mortgages, they'll cost you an additional $130,000 most likely. And, and, and borrowing, I mean, whether you're borrowing for a college education or whether you're borrowing for a new car or a used car, or you're borrowing for anything, or your credit card uh, costs, gonna skyrocket. You're gonna have bigger price tags for everything you buy. This is gonna be inflation brought to you by Kevin Mark McCarthy's Republican House. Mm -hmm. And of course, the national debt. I know they don't care about this because the national debt grew by record rates under Donald Trump and the Republican Congress, but the U.S. national debt would likely increase by $850 billion, Jeez. maybe up to a trillion dollars. So the consequences of this game that they're playing right now, and it is just a game. If they had actually fought for the things I begged them to fight for when Donald Trump was president, you could actually right. take them at their word. Right. That they actually gave a damn about deficits and the debt, but they don't. They're counting on this people is a not game. remembering, yeah, I guess. But, but we remember, uh, and the Americans will remember. Karen, before you go, I, I want to, uh, as the fate of Mythopristone uh, hangs in the balance, I wonder uh, what the White House is thinking and what the president is thinking are options if women lose access to this drug that they've, they've had access to and have needed for their health care for decades. So I'll say this, uh, Mika, we are going to be prepared for whatever the Supreme Court decides, and we will be ready to fight legally, have a long legal battle if that is necessary. What I can say is that we are going to continue to support FDA's uh, evidence-based approval of Mifeprestone. They are an independent agency, and let's not forget, they also oversee uh, a wider range of other prescription drugs. So this, everything's at stake right now. 
now. This is a huge fight that is in front of us at this time. And what this administration is going to continue to promise and continue to do is fight for women's reproductive rights. That is something that, that women, millions of women across the country and Americans should know that that is what the Biden-Harris administration is, is going to continue to do is fight, is fight for women's reproductive rights. All right, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, thank you very much for coming you, on the show this morning. Thank you, Joe. Thank